Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about uh, a, an analysis we carried out on the HEPs data, the Health Education Population Survey, um, looking at the way in which WEMWEBS relates to different lifestyle factors. And once again, you know, I've got lots of people uh, who work with me on this, and uh, it was Jane Parkinson again at NHS Health Scotland who funded it. Um, We've got lots of studies showing that various different aspects of lifestyle, smoking, alcohol, physical activity, that relate to mental, well, mental illness and to lack of mental illness. So there's plenty of studies showing there is an association. I've put here firmly no studies looking at the relationship between mental well-being and health-related lifestyles. I think probably that's wrong. Uh, and if I went back into the literature, I'd find various measures that tapped aspects of mental well-being that had been looked at in terms of lifestyle but the overall construct hasn't really existed until recently, so there's very little research on it. Um, but it, it, it did seem to be very useful to establish uh, whether there's an association between lifestyles and mental well-being in this, and whether it's the same or different from that with mental illness. And the HEP survey <coughs> data allowed us to do that. So for those of you who don't know, it's a rolling biannual survey. It's now stopped. Um, but it was interviewer-based using computer-assisted technology. Um, and then we're using in this, it, it, they did it twice a year, and we're using waves 13 and 14, which were the end of 2006, beginning of 2007. So we got a random sample of the Scottish population uh, between 16 and 74. Um, and so our sample uh, was just under 2,000, um, slightly more women than men. This is the sort of response bias you almost always get. About a third um, on these indicators deprived. 37% um, reporting a long-standing illness. Now, that's quite low compared to what you get in England, and it may be the very stoical spots, but I, I don't know enough about how that question works in other surveys. Uh, a mere 3% reporting a long-standing mental illness. That's also the sort of thing you get when you ask this question. People don't declare mental illnesses with... Um, the question, do you have a long-standing illness, disability, or infirmity? Um, but 90% of them completed WEMWEBS and also the GHQ, so we could look at how these measures worked with both. Um, these were the lifestyle questions that were asked. Um, these were the ones about food. So we got one about fruit and veg, one about oily fish, and one about sugar, uh, and then the one about exercise. I just want you to look at the response categories a minute because uh, your fruit and veg, the top category was several times a day. So if you did it twice, uh, ate twice a day, that was the same as, you know, you'd score at the same category level as people who ate the magic five a day. Um, and um, once a week or less often was the bottom category there. Uh, for the fish, you know, if you're doing it several times a week, um, th then, then that's your, your maximum. You can't, you know, if you do it every day, that doesn't score you any more than twice a week and never is the response category at the bottom. People who never ate fruit and veg would be when in these who ate it once a week. Um, and with the sugar, uh, we've got a better spread, really, I think, with that. The question on physical activity <coughs> was, have you or have you not in the last seven days? And these were the examples that were given. Um, so I think probably if you were doing a lot of yoga, you'd have said no. Uh, if you did a lot of running around cleaning houses, you'd have said no, you know, just because your brain would have been asked to think about weight training. Um, so uh, th that's an interesting question and um, not been asked like that in a lot of other surveys in physical activity. Uh, with the alcoholic drinks, uh, we've got have you had, had one or not in the last seven days, and if you said no, that was off you go. Uh, but if you did say yes, you were allowed to have these response categories. Now, the top response categories includes those who are drunk under the bridge at Central Station all the time and those who have won their very healthy glass of red wine every day. So I don't think it's a very discriminatory variable, that, um, and you will see more of that anon. Um, with the smoking, it was, do you smoke tobacco at all nowadays? So now I'm afraid we've got to do some more serious stuff. Um, we'll just have a little look at the distribution of WEMWEBS by age because I, I think it's, um, it's helpful to see that and we've not put it up yet. Um, and it, it, we do, you know, it is a U-shaped distribution, but it's not a hell of a U, you know, and when you see it like that, you start realising that actually the scatter is much greater at every age, but statistically there is a U-shaped distribution 
And statistically, if you look at the scores with the GHQ, you also get an um, upside-down U, as you'd expect, because the scores go in a different way. Now, with um, the, the GHQ, there are various different ways of scoring it. I'm going to say a word about that in a minute. But the obvious one is to add up the items. There's only four response items to GHQ. But you add them up, and you get a score like you do with WemWebs. And that we call the continuous score. Um, in fact, with the continuous score, um, the logarithmic scale fitted what we were doing slightly better than the, the, the standard score. Um, but because it's quite complicated to interpret and because the results were exactly the same using both measures, um, we, I'm presenting those with the, with the ordinary continuous score. Um, what psychiatrists do, and a lot of people do when they use the GHQ, is they dichotomize, the, uh, they divide into categories. And I, it, it, it's always completely incomprehensible to me why people should do that, because you lose a lot of statistical power. But it is done by people who are extremely keen to identify the mentally ill and the rest, separate from the rest. And what they do is they add up the items for people who are scoring three or more. So they just, you know, if an item scores three or more, it checks one, and if it's scoring two or one, it checks zero. Um, and then, so then, then you get this sort of scoring system. Um, and uh, you get very skewed distribution. So most of the population are scoring. This is a lovely floor effect with the GHQ. Uh, and, and, here. and then people use different cutoff points. Some say, you know, if you've got two or more, you're mentally ill, four or more, you're mentally ill, eight or more, you're mentally ill, and different, different surveys use different levels. So we have been, I work with this incredibly thorough statistician. Actually, I have to say, I worked very little on this because I took a year's sick leave and then they did the WAVE project and they did this project. So I was in at the beginning and the end of both of them. Um, but the, the statistician, Tim Frieda, was marvelously thorough. And so we did it always, always in which ways. Um, if you look at the correlation, Tim, um, um, Steve's just been talking about that, uh, with WEMWEBs, as you would expect, the continuous correlates much more highly than the, than the dichotomized. Um, you just have much more, more, more power with the continuous. Um, so anyway, got there. <laughs> Done the number crunching bit. <laughs> now it's all bar charts.